Hello again and welcome to Current uh, Topics in Dental Health. I'm your host, Dave Dobbins. Uh, these are a series of programs that we're doing about our teeth and how to take care of them properly. And so we would like to welcome our uh, distinguished guest. Please welcome Dr. Charlie Horning, Dr. Richard Mullins, and to my far right and your left would be Dr. Thomas Partridge. So we, if you've seen these series before, we've been having a lot of fun with talking about dental things and teeth and I'm learning a lot. So I hope you are too. So please stay tuned. This is gonna be a show that's packed with a lot of good information about how to care for our teeth properly. So let's get started today. Let's talk about those nasty things we talked about in our previous programs, gentlemen. When we get those cavities that we don't want to have, we go into the dentist and, the, and you guys will fill us up with amalgam or composite fillings mm -hmm. and then we go on our merry way and we continue to eat our sugar and until the next time. So let's talk about sort of the controversy over that amalgam versus composite fillings. What are the differences and what are the pros and cons of that? If I may? Yes, sir. Uh, silver fillings or amalgam have been available in dentistry for 150 years. 150. It is the most widely studied material in either medicine or dentistry. Really? There have been more studies, more research done on that particular material than any other. Why? Because of A, its unique properties, uh, the combination of metals, and its unique ability uh, for longevity, but in addition, the controversy over whether the mercury that's present actually does have any deleterious effects on the patient's health. So do we know the answer to that after 150 years? No, we don't. <laughs> However, what we have seen is all of the double-blind refereed studies have shown no deleterious effects. Good. Um, if one were to even envision the removal of all the silver fillings in every person in the United States, it would take multiple lifetimes to do that. It's just not going to happen. Um, the great thing about amalgam is it is the least expensive restorative material filling in dentistry. Even if poorly done, it can last multiple years. Uh, as a corollary, composite restorations, white fillings, which are certainly very popular today and have been vastly improved with bonding agents and uh, uh, much smaller particle sizes, have certainly improved in quality and are beginning to approach in the short term, let's say in studies that would extend two to five to ten years, approaching the quality uh, and longevity of amalgam. But many of the elderly population have amalgams that have been in their mouths for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years or longer. Uh, there's no material other than gold in dentistry that has that longevity. Uh, my advice to the population that would be viewing this program is have that conversation with your dentist to make sure that you're choosing a restorative material that best meets your needs. Okay, so we're talking about composite fillings. You've got a cavity, you go in to see your dentist, you put in a composite filling. What is composite? I don't understand. Composite would be um, a material uh, in the, the, the most uh, easy to understand terms of uh, a, a glass reinforced material wow. Wow. that is now able to bond to the tooth structure Wow. that has the potential to reinforce it wow. and to have uh, wonderful color uh, to match the existing tooth structure. Okay, so what comes to my mind first would be a broken tooth, the whole side, if we can use the tooth there. Uh, Certainly. The whole side of the tooth has broken off, so can, can you use a composite filling? Let's just say we've lost this top part, is that how it would be used? Would you explain that to me? Dr. If a Horn? corner is broken off or there's decay that goes over the side of the tooth, yes. The larger the break, the more that is missing, the less the chance that a filling will work. 
composite or amalgam, and then you're looking at inlays or onlays or crowns in order to do that. If there's a major section of the tooth that's missing, you need to consider uh, coverage and protection, which composite in general cannot offer. Okay. All right, good. That's what I thought. All right, very good. Anybody else wanted to uh, address this subject? I'd like to <clears throat> mention one thing about uh, so-called amalgam or silver fillings. Uh, we are, of course, as professionals, concerned about anything toxic, and mercury, which is part of the silver uh, filling makeup, is very, very toxic by itself. Uh, but when it is an amalgam bonded with the silver, it's a completely different chemical. Sodium is a very toxic chemical. Chlorine is a very toxic chemical. But sodium chloride combined is table salt. It's in every cell in our body. I would never eat chlorine or sodium by itself. I'd be dead in minutes. Mm -hmm. But combined, it's not only safe, it's part of our physiology. Mm -hmm. And in a similar way, the amalgam and bonded to the mercury is a totally different, stable, stable phenomenon. And that's been proven many times with very solid research. So if we get a cavity, the fillings uh, of the old way is changing, everybody. So be ready to ask your doctor about something new called composite. And it's all not new to them, it's just new to me. So uh, I'd like to add that also the chemistry of composites aren't completely benign either. Okay. Yes. So there are drawbacks also to composites. So the uh, bottom line is, as we're trying to promote in all of these series, take care of your teeth better, better than we all have been. Okay. Now, let's move to another subject, and this is a deep one. Oh. A little dental humor for, from Dave today. Let's all talk about root canals, everybody. Oh, people just left the living room. They said, oh, I don't want to talk about that. Ooh, I feel the pain already. Root canals. Okay, so let's give a, a good explanation of what a root canal is. What First of all, somebody comes in, they've got that severe pain in their tooth. I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on. And the dentist says, you are going to need a root canal. Please explain. Uh, if I may have my model. Yes, sir. Uh, root canals are generally involved when we have a sick tooth and teeth become sick for various reasons. Uh, perhaps maybe uh, at one time a deep filling uh, close to the pulp, close to the nerve. This becomes damaged over a period of time and then eventually uh, becomes sicker. Uh, so we have a sick tooth. A root canal involves in simple terms removing the sick part out of the tooth. It's very similar to any other dental procedure. It just takes a little more time. We have to do a little more anesthetic to make sure the patient's comfortable. Once we have the pulp removed or the diseased tissue, that gives us then uh, some hollow canals in, in each root. Uh, I like to place some medication in here for a few weeks just to help clean and sanitize a bit more. And then eventually to finish the root canal on a subsequent visit, uh, fillings are placed in inside the canal to the terminus of each root to seal it. Uh, to be sure things stay healthy. Okay. After that, we have to think about a restoration for the tooth, uh, molars, generally a crown to fit over it to hold the tooth together to strengthen mm -hmm. it. Uh, anterior teeth, front teeth, uh, sometimes don't need crowns. Uh, a regular filling will sometimes suffice. But uh, instead of taking out the tooth, the whole tooth, uh, root canal involves just, taking out okay. uh, just the sick part. Okay, so that's that's good news. So, um, is it is it true, doctors, that in back in the in the good old days when our country was first discovered, that the uh, the uh, good old Wild West has got that image of the doctor with the pair of pliers and his foot on the shoulder, yanking the tooth out. Well, we got her out, and that's what they used to do. But now we've saved the tooth. By yes. removing the root. Uh, the okay. pulp inside the, the root. The pulp inside the root. Yes. Okay, so my question is why do we have those daggone roots? Well, it keeps our teeth in for us. Uh, the keeps pulp, them in. Okay. Yes. All right. That, the pulp is actually the, form of of, the formative tissue. It's the pulp that forms our tooth. And once we have things formed, we have little openings at the end of each canal to allow the blood vessels 
Uh, the nervous supply to come in like any other organ in our body, it needs a blood supply mm -hmm. and a nervous supply to function. Unfortunately, it's uh, an organ that sometimes doesn't heal very well if it's been insulted with cavities, fillings, and a lot of restorations. Okay, so if I've got severe pain in my mouth and I don't know what it is, it could be a root canal, but uh, to clarify, it's best to call your dentist. You can also, you can also I'm sure there's a lot of good uh, narrative online at ada.org for the American Dental Association. For those of you that uh, may want to go to your computer and check, but the main thing is, as you said, it's been uh, assaulted by by decay. So then something has come in and worked its way down. Yes. And the bacteria, as, as Dr. Partridge referred to on the previous program, the bacteria has come in. It's a de facto infection. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds really good. <laughs> a de facto infection. Okay, so how long do root canals last? I've had s several root canals. I am 65. They were done when I was 23. Mm. So uh, I certainly can last for a lot of years. A lot of this depends on, uh, on how much tooth structure you have uh, to fix up after the root canal. Uh, it also depends on the care of the teeth after the root canal. Uh, the bacteria that cause decay, they don't care if it's had a root canal or not. So you still have to take care of your tooth. What do you there, mean? But let's talk about that. What do you mean? Um, the care of the tooth after root canal. It has I've to got be my root canal. I'm good to go. Yes. I'm going to go back to my old ways. What do I, how do I care It can for still it? decay. It can still get periodontal disease or gum disease. Mm. So we, we still have to maintain it as our other tooth, other teeth. So you don't ignore it. You go, well, I've got the fake cap and I'm good yeah, to go, right. but you need to still yes. floss. You still need to care for it. Yes. Okay. Uh, there are times where I'll have a patient uh, who is uh, sent for a root canal, perhaps uh, the tooth structure isn't sufficient to, uh, to fix afterwards. Um, it's too far gone. I will advise them to sometimes, uh, instead of a root canal, to go ahead maybe and have the tooth extracted and then think about an implant or a bridge uh, to uh, uh, fix up the okay. space. Okay, because I would, I would like to get into that subject um, because I think that well, I guess first of all, the question that I have in my mind, and maybe our viewers are, are wondering, how do I know that it's beyond repair? How do I know? I mean, how often should I be going in and seeing one of you gentlemen, like Dr. Horning, you're a dentist, you take care, you all take care of patients every day. Uh, and we sort of, as, as people, we sort of ignore our teeth. Would, would that be accurate? Sure. We kind of we ignore our as teeth. As long as they're not causing you trouble. Right. So how do we know that something's not wrong? Uh, I heard a story about a gentleman that he had uh, an infection. He went to the doctor, and the doctor said, you're fine. One of the dentist and said it was fine. And uh, come to find out later, there was a dental problem there, and so it created some additional issues. How often does that happen? Uh, that would be relatively rare. As long as you're seeking uh, routine care from uh, a competent dental practitioner, uh, you should be uh, in good hands. Uh, there are several ways that you can diagnostically determine whether a tooth needs a root canal. Uh, one was the symptomatology that you just described. I have pain. Another can be extreme sensitivity uh, to temperature. Hot and cold. Anytime I put anything cold in my mouth, it kills me. That's a problem. That's a problem. It needs to be addressed. Okay. When I bite down, Mm -hmm. I can't bite on that side. Something hurts. Okay. So that's another reason you may have a crack in a tooth that goes into the pulp, the nerve that Dr. Mullins was just describing. There's another potential. A third way, and what's most important, is to make sure that you have an x-ray series to examine your teeth so that you can be sure that you're availing yourself of all the information available to you that uh, a tooth that does not hurt does not necessarily mean 
that it isn't in trouble. You can see an abscess at the end of the root of the tooth. The tooth can have no symptoms, but the nerve in the tooth can be dead, oh. and there can be an infection at the end of the root that you're unaware of. Ooh, so you need to that. be sure that you're getting routine care, proper x-ray X and evaluation okay. to make sure that you're in optimal health. Okay, very good. So pay attention to your teeth. Pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> As your mother used to say, brush your teeth regularly. All right, so we've kind of covered the root canal thing, but what if um, I'm, a, I'm a good old fella and I haven't really been going in so much, been kind of busy and maybe I don't have a, a regular dentist and I haven't been to a dentist in a lot of years and I walk in and I see you and you say, sir or ma'am, it's gone. We're going to have to do an implant and I look at you with crazy eyes and I say what is an implant so let's talk a little bit about implants and really what is an implant how do we know when we need one and kind of whoever wants to kind of this Partridge. is a big subject here I'm sure yes Dr. Partridge is going to help us to understand it a dental implant is a threaded titanium cylinder kind of like a machine bolt in a BMW engine that is literally screwed and bolted into the jaw to support a tooth. Mm. Uh, we have a they're, picture? They're developed, they do have, they're developed to uh, when root canals fail, teeth, people fracture teeth and so forth. It's a little schematic. Uh, this shows an implant with the, the gum and the way it shows in the bone, natural tooth in the bone. An implant is placed down into the bone, uh, set at rest, heal for a while, and later on a tooth is placed on it by the restorative dentist, Dr. Horn. Could I have that? Yeah. Oh, oh, when you're okay. through. Okay. The thing that revolutionized dental implants, and rev so they're such a standard of care at this point in time, there's a famous slide, it's the cover of a, of a journal, there's a famous slide that showed properly placed titanium. The, the bone cells grabbed a hold of the titanium with the same wow. attachment to other bone cells. It becomes a permanent, so-called osseointegrated part of your body. Uh, wow. This revolutionized hip surgery, knee surgery, everything. Titanium. And we have to brag about it because this happened yeah. in the dental profession 10 years before awesome. the orthopedists awesome. figured out we were on the I was right just going to ask you to hold okay. that up uh, so that the, folk, the other side, so that yep. the folks back home can see. Yep. So this is what you don't want to get to, but <laughs> if you do, we've got the technology, thanks to the dental industry, mm -hmm. to help us because, let's face it, we have to eat three times a day. Or more. <laughs> Small meals often, right? Hopefully. That's what yes. you always say. So um, if we're at this place, this is uh, an expensive place to be at for not taking care of our teeth. Let's speak to that a little bit. Dr. Mullins. Uh, Expense-wise? or Yes, expense-wise for not paying attention. Uh, Maybe not his area of expertise. Well, that's fine. Dr. Dr. Horning. Uh, yeah, with Dr. Partridge. Yeah. I, would, I would say that as a rough estimate, uh, to have the implant placed and uh, not have major uh, site preservation, uh, bone reconstruction and grafting, which is another subject, because you can have soft tissue grafting and hard tissue grafting with bone, uh, to make sure the site where that implant is placed is as ideal as possible. Those fees aside, um, probably in the $2,000 to $2,200 neighborhood approximately depending upon wow. cost would be the surgery. The restorative part mm -hmm. have the abutment placed underneath the crown that would attach to that implant and the crown placed on top is approximately another $2,000. Mm -hmm. So you may easily invest $4,000 in having a single tooth replaced. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll let Dr. Partridge speak. I didn't mean to no, uh, presume on his <clears throat> fees because I don't know for sure. Well, Dr. Horning is, is right. There's an expense. Uh, we're going back to endodontics and Keith, Dr. Mullins, a concern. Sometimes these teeth that have had big abscesses, and as Dr. Mullins said, this is not treatable. It's too chronic. Something is, it's a, too much infection. These areas have to have grafts, bone grafts. Here we go. We can double the cost of an implant right there with bone grafts, and there are synthetically uh, derived hormones that help bone grow and heal that we're using now very effectively. But these things add a lot of expense. If you uh, just join us, we're talking about current 
topics in dental health. I'm your host, Dave Dobbins, and we're we're kind of there's a clear message that's coming forth, gentlemen, that we are not taking care of our teeth if we're talking about these things. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask just a direct question: How often are are these kind of things? How, how often are you doing this? Is it frequent? It's a regular component of our practice. For Is sure. it really? Absolutely, wow. all of us. Wow. Yes. So there are a lot of us that are not paying attention to our teeth. Well, and bad things happen. Accidents, accidents happen. Well, accidents yeah, happen. say it's a car accident mm -hmm. or something, right. and that's understandable, mm -hmm. or a sports in incident. Or fractured tooth. Fractured People tooth. People fracture teeth, they clench their teeth, they bite into a little piece of grain or something they didn't realize. Them. Okay. These things oh, happen. Yes. Okay, so it's not just negligence. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Uh, there is a certain percentage of the population, though, that has been so unlucky as to have lost all of their teeth. Oh, my goodness. And they wear dentures. That. And for those mm. individuals, they are really at a tremendous disadvantage, especially if they have lost all of their lower teeth. The bone disappears, essentially, atrophies uh, with no teeth. That's one of the major advantages of having a root canal to save the tooth so that the bone level and the gum level stay there in addition to having the function, but one of the ancillary advantages of having an implant is that you can restore that bone height and restore that function. If you've lost all of your teeth, then you become uh, very disadvantaged. And one of the great advances in dentistry was the ability of implants to be used in the lower arch. For example, with this, a, the most simple of implant placements you can have a denture even retrofitted to have even just two implants placed so that that lower denture can then snap in and become much, much more stable. So an individual who had almost no bone support for lower denture and was unable to chew effectively can now have something that is a tremendous advantage. There are many other ways to restore the mouth with implants, but for an individual who has virtually nothing and no ability, for not a great deal of money, they can then have some support. And I want your audience to know that for sure. So You are not hopeless. Yeah, that's great. That does give a lot of hope. Uh, and unfortunately, we do have car accidents and sporting incidents and terrible things that happen to people. Mm -hmm. But this titanium technology with the implant mm -hmm. is just fascinating. Mm -hmm. So how long has this been in the dental industry, uh, Dr. Partridge? A, a Swedish orthopedic mm -hmm. surgeon, uh, Dr. Pierre Brandemark, uh, came to McGill University in, in Canada in 1986. He had a 20-year study with nearly 20,000 titanium dental implants in Sweden. Wow. Remarkable study. And it revolutionized everything we did. Uh, it was a new start in the beginning. Uh, uh, his, uh, his success rate in the lower jaw it was close to 99% for 20 wow. years. In the upper jaw, very near 98%. Mm. In 2006, it became a 40-year study. Wow. All, every fixture is registered. People have died out of the study, but the success rate is nearly the same. So the, the tissue grows around uh, the titanium, mm -hmm. and we're as good as we're, we're good to go. But, the bone. Um, the bone. Around the bone. Rather. What Dr. Horning <laughs> said is interesting. The bone in, with no teeth keeps atrophying and disappearing. With the implants functioning in the bone, it creates, sends a biologic message, and it maintains the bone. So wow. it's a pretty, pretty phenomenal. Fantastic. Okay, so if you have any more questions about this, um, you can also, again, go to ada.org for the American Dental Association or um, contact here, us here uh, at actv.org, or you can connect with any of these fine dentists and I don't want to miss your term up periodontist yes periodontist. Dr. <laughs> Thomas Partridge and endodontist Dr. Richard Mullins and uh, all around good guy dentist Dr. Charles Horning who does all of these wonderful things as well too uh, I don't know if you have an uh, let me clarify that yes please do I do not you do place not. implants. Okay. I do not do root canals. Okay, good. And that is a choice in my practice that I would rather work with the very best professionals to do what they do best so that I can good. then do my very best. Good, so I didn't want to cut you short and say the wrong thing there. Uh, use that <laughs> short term again. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go uh, in our last comment, our last subject matter, 
uh, where, uh, what are porcelain veneers and how are they used? Uh, if I can address that, yes, that sir. is part of restorative dentistry. Right, very good. Porcelain <laughs> veneers are uh, an aesthetic enhancement of an individual smile, uh, primarily done for that particular reason, but they can also take care of uh, spaces or diastemas between the teeth. They can... Which Dave oh, has. Yes. Yep. It doesn't seem to affect you negatively, though. Well, just who um, I am. Thank it, you. For those individuals that have multiple fillings, and those fillings are not so devastating as to need full coverage crowns, porcelain veneers can give them uh, the support they need. You can change color, you can change shape, you can enhance smiles. Um, but primarily it is a, an aesthetic cosmetic benefit. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm a coffee drinker. A lot of our viewers are coffee drinkers. I'm not a smoker, however, man, many of our viewers may be smokers. Is this, this veneer helpful in that regard? Certainly, if you're wanting okay. to change the color. Veneers okay. are glass. Um, they, there are new materials and new bonding uh, agents that make them virtually one with the tooth. Uh, it is an, an exceptional and wonderful benefit Great. that dentistry has to offer now. Okay, so I, I'm not sure if this ties in, okay, because I'm not uh, in your guys' category, but what about the, the technology that we have uh, at Kroger's and Walgreens and places in CVS and try to get them all in uh, for whitening our teeth? It's not quite the same as the porcelain veneering, but is this something that we should be using, something that we should be concerned about? I'm kind of throwing this in at the end because mm -hmm. I think it's... Sure. Uh, it's, it has no real benefit other than cosmetic. It isn't going to cure anything. It isn't going to make anything better. If you have dental disease, it has no effect at all. Um, one of the great jokes in dentistry is this individual comes into the office and they have terrible breath and the mouth falling apart, but their only concern is whether they can have their teeth whitened. Uh, that is perhaps uh, a benefit at the end, if you will, after you've properly restored a mouth to back to mm -hmm. ideal health. Mm -hmm. Okay, as we finish off this program, we'd like to invite you to come back again time and time again uh, to ACTV.org to find out more about uh, the latest things in dental care for your teeth. I would like to thank our distinguished guest uh, for being with us on this program whenever you're viewing it at daytime or evening. And are there any final thoughts as far as, as we go out as far as caring for our teeth properly that each of you would like to, Dr. Partridge, that you would like to tell our viewers before we go? Well, I think a line that someone told me, a healthy uh, mouth is a healthy heart and I think we need to really concentrate on health is home care cleaning and professional dental cleaning. Okay, Dr. Mullins? For me home care seems to be the real key and if you aren't getting instruction at your dental office from the hygienist mm -hmm. I would ask them to instruct you exactly how to use your floss. Uh, sometimes it's you know, hard to use but if, if you can get some instruction to use it and, and um, also the electric toothbrush. Okay. Yep. And finally, Dr. Horning, as we've kind of finished up. Perhaps the greatest bottom line mm -hmm. is that if you keep your teeth, you live longer. What more could be said? That's good. So there you've heard it. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. Take care. And thanks for viewing. Bye-bye.